Hi, and welcome back to another episode of the History of Fan Anime. I'm your host, William Chow, and today's episode is an episode a lot of people have been sort of waiting for, and that is, how did you do the fan subbing uh, back, when, back in the day? And the reason uh, this is really significant is because a lot of people, especially the modern people, get, they're having grasp onto is, is that, you know, fan subbing, well, how hard is that? You just... You know, throw it into the computer. There's all these programs to help you. Uh, you, know, you know, you know, find the audio peaks, and uh, all you do is you just uh, load the video up into your uh, video editor and typeset all your fonts on it, and you're done, right? Well, how hard is that? But here, uh, you're missing the one point: is that a lot of the fan something that we did happened in the early '90s, and um, basically uh, before Windows 95 even existed. So you don't have these editors and you don't have the ability to, to load all the videos into a computer because again, hard drives and memory space weren't available. You know, the computers weren't strong enough and um, you know, the hard drives weren't big enough. So how do you do it? So again, I'm gonna go through this episode and I'm go through some of the processes and, and, and um, you know, the techniques that we used to make the, fa uh, the fan subs that, uh, that, that we had done. And we basically used the system very efficiently. We put out over a thousand episodes of, uh, of, of uh, you know, TV shows, OVAs, um, uh, movies, and that kind of stuff uh, using this system. And, and it, to most of you know, people's uh, you know, the, the delight, uh, we've helped uh, get Japanese animation off the ground and off its feet and basically uh, you know, got a lot of people into this genre and basically brought this genre to um, you know, to the state that you you have it today, okay, and um, and so in the example I'm going to use uh, during this is um, from this laser disc here, okay. Uh, this is a uh, uh, laser disc for the uh, Azukun Cha Cha, okay, or Red Riding Hood Cha Cha, okay. A very you know really funny. It looks like a kid's story, but it's, it's actually really quite funny. You know, a lot of adult humor and and, and whatnot into it. Um, and again, for all those people who happen to be in the um, uh, lower part of Asia, you know, uh, you know Indonesia, Malaysia, uh, you know, and the Philippines and that kind of stuff, uh, you were able to get an English dub version of uh, Red Radio Cha Cha um, uh, on AXN, so you were really lucky. But again, for those people who uh, didn't have access to that, uh, yeah, again, uh, we had made the first fan subs for this one for the North American market. Uh, again, one of these uh, favorites for Daisuke, okay? So, without further delay, Let's begin. Okay, so first what we're going to do is going to basically take our Red Riding Hood uh, Cha Cha uh, laser disc here, and we're going to put it into the laser disc player. Now this is very important because this is like the, basically the best quality source video that we're going to get. Because obviously, you know, if we're going to record something off of Japanese TV and put it onto a video cassette and get that uh, sent over from Japan to, to us, and then you know, in order to then you know, make a good copy subtitle of that, then we, you know, obviously going to be one generation away or maybe two or three generations down, and that's going to, you know, degrade the video quality. So it's very, very important to start with a good copy of Laser. So here we go. We play the Laser player, we press play, and that will yield us our source video. Okay, so as you can see, we have a nice clean uh, uh, video copy of the uh, Red Ray Cha Cha. Now, you may notice that, um, I remember on the Laserdisc version, um, they had to redub the opening theme song by one of the VAs because they couldn't get the rights from SMAP to make the actual uh, video. So, again, so all the versions that you had here um, off the Laserdisc was the VA version of that. So, uh, what we did in our subtitles is we took the TV broadcast version of it and we use that instead. But you can see, you know, this is the, the, the opening video that we would use um, for the, um, uh, the videos here. So again, strange Japanese, no subtitles, no nothing right now, and nothing changes. So this is what we start with. Okay, so now I'm going to load up on the computer the um, raw untitled script as we call it so basically this is um you know comes basically straight from the translator um in this case it's uh you know uh that uh, case pen name k uh fuyoka and um basically it's basically is a, a line by each particular character uh written out um separated by uh, a slash and um no, nothing's timed or anything, so we, we we don't know when, um, you know, when who and then who is actually doing all the speaking. But then basically, as the dialogue comes up, we are going to basically do a rough timing of the actual video. Okay, 
Um, so basically, uh, what we're going to do is um, we have to do this in real time. Okay, so while the video is live, we're going to play the video. As soon as the video starts, we're going to have to, you know, um, hit a program that will basically start a, a running timer. The running timer um, will then basically, uh, as each of the tiles come up, we will basically, uh, you know, either you know hit spacebar, and that will basically um, fill in um, where one of those uh, blank slashes is. It'll actually put uh, the time that is, has elapsed on the timer. Um, there will be the return key we will use to take the title off um, and put a blank screen back there on there, and it will record what time that blank screen is on. So again, you know, the, we, the, get, the time elapsed will then be recorded by this program. Sounds a little complicated, but you know, uh, this is one of the th ways that we had to do it. And again, this has to be done in real time using a real timer. So for example, this episode of Cha Cha is going to be 22 roughly minutes from start to finish. Um, you know, we have to time that entire sequence in one run you know we can't just you know time five minutes of it and stop and then you know do all that you know basically and and then try to restart again you know five minutes and one second uh, later and then try to redo it again right um, you can do that um, you know trying to find a natural stopping point or a natural start and stopping point is sometimes difficult because uh, you know it might not have access or you know it might be not an easy spot to pause and and restart um, obviously Things like the beginning of the episode, um, maybe at the commercial break, things like that, um, you know, is, is always a possibility. Um, but uh, you know, uh, well, uh, because these episodes are only 22 episodes long, you know, from basically, um, uh, you know, from the start of the episode through the commercial break, uh, all the way to the end, it's generally speaking done as one file, one thing. Okay. And again, it's again uh, important to, to note that also, you know, we are doing this in a single run. We're also hoping that the computer doesn't crash or the timer doesn't stop or something somewhere in the middle because if it does, we have to basically scrap what we've done, go right back to the beginning again and basically start all over again and restart the timing all over again. So again, um, you know, that's part of the reason why, you know, we can't do, you know, m you know, well, we can, I suppose, but like, you know, it, it's very time consuming doing multiple runs on this thing and then having it, you know, crash in the middle of it and then you know having to redo it again so basically um, we are just basically going to run it through once you know we're going to use a VCR and we're going to record um, what we what we time um, so then that we can see where the timer is and what times those titles come up because then you know afterwards we can then go backwards and edit it and find out where we made the mistakes and stuff okay so let's start here as you can see on the script here uh, you know, uh, uh, Cha Cha's first line is going to be dandelion fuzz turn into Leah. Um, uh, then um, Sarah Vee is going to go. Uh, no, sorry. Then uh, the the uh, the the OG San shows up and he goes ah yeah, Genki desu ka, which is the nice weather. Uh, and then um, Sarah Vee will then answer Cha Cha. I'm afraid he's not Leah. Okay, so now we're going to talk a little bit about the, the setup of the, um, the video now. So now what we're going to do is um, the video coming off of the laser display uh, is going to go through the Genlock, okay? Now this is the Genlock I was using. It's the uh, Super Gen uh, Genlock uh, from Progressive Images, okay? And it was the one that I, was, uh, you know, I originally remember buying um, from a, com a Commodore um, computer store um, on Fraser Street. Uh, near 41st and uh, John Oliver School. Um, I uh, bought this uh, thing. It was about a thousand bucks at the time. And um, basically, what it does, it allows you to take your RGB signal, okay, and overlay uh, that video signal to the uh, to to the incoming video. So as you notice on the very top of this unit here, um, there is a RGB input, um, and there's also a video in and video out. Um, um, on this, uh, you know, on this device. So basically, you know, quite simply, it uh, just takes the, you know, the the the, the, the signal that is coming, that's showing up on your screen, and it's going to basically um, um, output that 
uh, on top of your or key that against um, your video okay so here we have the blue screen that uh, is uh, showing up on the computer side so basically everywhere that you see that's blue um, you will now see video okay so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to drag the timer uh, window uh, on top of this blue screen so basically this timer will basically allow me to uh, see how far in the video I've gone and um, and see uh, you know where I'm gonna be laying down the dialogue and laying down all the uh, timing tracks okay um, because it's not blue um, you will not be able to see the video through this um, box see so that's why it appears on the screen um, uh, you know separately not keyed by the gen lock okay so if I press play on my lasers player uh, this is what uh, the end result looks like you see the timer going on there um, showing me what uh, you know how far in the video I'm gone and of course the video wherever it was blue you now see the video okay so now this is the matter of now synchronizing um, that script that I showed you uh, in the from text file form um, with using that timer trying to get the times on that and trying to get that synced up and and uh, basically you know extrapolated and pulled and put into that text file um, while it's running okay and again this has to be done in real time so let me just show you how uh, hard or difficult that may be okay so first of all what we're going to do is going to stick a, a empty cassette into the vcr and we're going to press record and basically record all the stuff that's uh, you know happening on the screen and then we can use this as a, a guide to, for editing the video okay so this is the most crucial part in this uh, fan summing uh, system i need to be able to start this timer precisely at the moment that I you know of the of the beginning of the episode because I want it to be someplace that will be the same every single time will be constant from every type of episode and I need it to start precisely at that um, beginning point and that's when I need the timing to start so while I'm recording this um, on the VCR um, I got the you know the, the Genlock smooth screen on there we've got the video ready to go underneath it um, we got my timer at the top of the screen and basically uh, you know, I've got my fan subbing program going and basically at the right moment I will then fire off and start the timer okay and begin the subtitling all right now I'm gonna, I'm gonna just do a little bit of you know sample titling um, on this one and then I'll show you what the different screens sort of look like okay so right now I'm prepping up for the uh, special moment at the particular point I want to press the space bar to begin the timer. So Mark get set space bar. Okay, now the timer's running. I'm just waiting for the dialogue to come up. Okay, now I go space bar. And then enter uh, soft Chacho's line. And then bing. Spacebar. Okay, enter. That's opposite. Spacebar for Ch uh, service line. Enter. Spacebar for Chacha's line. Enter. Enter. Spacebar. 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 Enter. Okay, so we'll stop it there. Uh, now we'll uh, switch to the uh, other screen. So this is now the, the second monitor. And uh, now we, the second monitor, we have uh, our uh, cha cha file that we have on text file. And what you've noticed is that the the um, subtitling program has now placed numbers um, in the, the little uh, slashes, okay, where we've decided, uh, you know, when the tiles are. So if you look at the first line, it's, uh, basically, the uh, 289, so it's, uh, at the 28.9th second, okay, so 28, uh, seconds, uh, 28.9th of a second, um, Chacha's line, that's Jia, as in senior, okay, will show up on the screen, and it will stay on the screen until 
the next uh, title command, which is slash 307, which is basically 30 seconds, uh, 30.7 seconds. It will take that title off and put a blank space on, and it will remain blank until uh, 320, which is uh, 32 seconds, and then the next line will continue and it goes all the way down. So basically, th what the subtitle program is doing is every time I press the space bar, it's putting a, a title, uh, that title number, on, on onto one of those uh, slashes. Okay, every time I press enter, it's putting in a blank space, so a slash with with uh, no uh, words or whatever, and it's recording the time as well. Uh, on that, and I'm basically, you know, so in a typical subtitling situation, uh, I'd have to go through the entire episodes, all you know, 20 minutes or 22 minutes, um, to do that, okay? And it has to be done one shot, one run, continuously because obviously the timer's running. I don't want to stop it and then try to restart it and then try to, you know, do things like anything like that, right? I want basically it has to be accurate to zero seconds, okay? When I press space bar at the very beginning it was accurate to that point and from that point onwards everything is based off of that starting point all right so uh, if you could uh, if you know again in this example i'm only doing the, this first little scene here um but again you know, it, in a normal subtitling situation i'd be continuing subtitling this pressing space bar and enter and all the way through for 22 minutes okay so now we go back to our video cassette and now we can play back what we've just done. So now we're, here we are, we're playing it back. And then the idea is, if we made a mistake in the subtitle, then we'd be able to see that um, um, again with their title at, at the bottom and when it actually gets timed in, in the timer. And then we can go flip back to the uh, subtitle file and look at uh, you know what the what the timing number was, and then maybe we can make corrections. Uh, things like this, uh, where the line over spills over the edge. Obviously, the font's too big, so we need to put some font commands in there to to you know reduce the size of the font because obviously uh, um, you know 40 point font is way too big for this particular uh, type of subtitle. So we need to lower the font. So we'll do that, and we'll, you know formatting of the you know big large paragraphs like this needs to be probably you know broken down. So we need to kind of fix that. And, and uh, and uh, correct some timing and that kind of stuff, and all this needs to be done, um, you know, using a VCR. And again, you know, um, you know, with an editing VCR, you have to you know use the uh, the jog dial and that kind of stuff in order to get the the accuracy you know, the way that you want it. And you basically, this is where you know a lot of the times you know we didn't spend a, a, a lot of time. I mean, we you know we could have spent you know two or three runs, uh, you know, to do that. Um, in order to get it, you know, really nice and tight and perfect. But again, you know, you know, Dyson's usually pretty good at the at that time. You have to, you know, write, you know, pretty much the first or second time around, light edits here and there, um, and then uh, you know, basically we're ready to run a good copy. Okay, so now for the real run, we take our blank tape now again and uh, get uh, it rewinded and uh, get it ready to hit record, and then we start recording, and now. We're gonna this time. We're gonna take away the time bar, so the time bar is not uh, at the top of the screen as you see. And now we're gonna take that, and uh, we're gonna basically take our script, and we're gonna start the subtitle again at exactly the right point, which is at right, right between that little blank spot between the uh, between the opening theme song there and the show. And then we'll, the titles will begin. Okay. So we're gonna press the space bar. Right there. Okay. And then basically, whatever we've made corrections to in that kind of stuff will now show up on the screen. We now we've done uh, you know the editing and the nice little uh, you know corrections to the font, and the time we shall all begin. And as you can see, the little program, what it does is it you know cuts a hole in that blue screen, and then it puts the tub the subtitles right in there, and. Uh, you know, and that's what makes it viewable. Okay. This subtitle program also, you know, centers it and all that kind of stuff as well uh, for that. And uh, so you see that, uh, you know, this is a, our version that we've uh, basically used. And, you know, one or two, maybe even three times, uh, you know, we're pretty much ready, ready to go. You know, sure, might be a little, maybe not the tightest thing in the world, but hey, for what it, for what it works and for what it did, um, you know, it uh, gave the world what was needed for 
show liked Red Riding Hood Cha-Cha. Okay, and what uh, is important to note here is that this is all being done live in real time, okay? So if I made a mistake, you know, at, uh, you know, let's say 20 minutes into the 22 episodes of the show, I would have to basically stop everything, rewind all the tapes all the way back to zero again, and basically restart all over from zero and begin the whole entire process over again and restart uh, this uh, you know recording all over again because there's no way to stop it and say okay well you know it worked up to you know number twenty you know time uh, like you know twenty minutes into the show and I can't begin it at twenty minutes and one second. And you know, expect it to continue onwards. No, we have to start it all over again at zero. Try to hit that start point at zero, like we did again uh, from the start. So that's why a lot of times, if the computer crashes or like you know, the, you know let's say and we're, we got, we've got multiple devices going on here, so you know, any one of the devices could crash or hang up or stop or you know, overheat or whatever, and uh, you know, and cause the the, the subtitles to freeze. Um, you know the screen to go blank. Uh, you know the video to you know to distort or you know, you know basically or lose video altogether. Um, any of these problems, we basically have to just you know, you know scrap everything and then basically start all over again from scratch, and um, and uh, you know basically you know reboot everything, you know reload the file back in, and then try to hit that zero point again, um, and in order to get it to go. And um, you know, I mean, sure, the subtitling program has you know some slight commands to help, you know help you adjust for speed and that kind of stuff. But basically, um, you know, if the uh, you know if there is something that, that that's seriously wrong or, or, or seriously drifts away, um, you know, uh, in in the uh, you know process of doing the subtitling, um, there really isn't any way to fix that. And of course, you know, you could say, oh well, you know, you could just keep editing it, you know. Um, and you're right, you know, you, you could probably keep going through and make a, you know, third uh, edit, a fourth edit, a fifth edit, a sixth edit, seventh edit, eighth edit, okay? But each one of those edits takes time and takes, uh, you know, effort to, you know, to do. And, you know, we're going through these episodes very, very quickly, um, you know, from basically uh, translation to end result, we're spending maybe five hours for a 22-minute episode. And sure, um, you know, if you had lots of people, or you know, you, you wish to spend lots and lots of time, you know, doing this kind of editing, yeah, you could spend like an entire day doing an episode. But then, you know, you'd have probably less episodes to put out, and, and you know, you'd, you'd have a slower pace of doing things. And um, again, um, you know, we were at that stage in time where we just wanted that, you know, the the most amount of content out there as possible because as I said a lot of the stuff is going to get licensed it's going to get you know um, you know picked up by somebody hopefully right and uh, you know better copies will appear on you know video cassette laser discs um, you know DVDs and that kind of stuff eventually so um, you know uh, uh, our, our goal was not to make a commercially you know perfect um, uh, you know uh, product Okay, because again, a lot of the products that we were comparing them to uh, was a lot of these Chinese martial arts movies, right? And, you know, and a lot of these you know, things, even like the, you know some things, like, some of the things like uh, you know, the early versions of, of um, you know Bruce Lee's uh, you know Game of Death and all this other stuff. Um, you know, they they weren't very well, well subtitled. The, the dialogue was really horrible on them. Uh, the translation was pretty horrible on them. And so you know. You know, the, what we had to compare them with, uh, with uh, you know, wasn't all that great either. So, we just needed something that, that you know, was just that will give the fans out there just enough translation that they could learn and enjoy it. And then hopefully some you know, company will say, this is a, you know, a, a great show. Let's go and license it and let's go there. Of course, you know, a show like Red Runner Chasha never made it to North America, but, you know, it did make it to you know like Thailand, Hong Kong, Malaysia, Indonesia, and that kind of stuff. Uh, so so it's great. So you know, for, you know copies and that kind of stuff are available out there. Someone obviously saw saw the uh, you know the the, the um, you know the the humor and the, and, the, and the you know the lovability about this particular show. Uh, but yeah, hopefully this applies to other shows as well. Okay. Okay. So. That was hopefully uh, you learned something a little bit about that and basically seen uh, basically how hard it was to make uh, videos uh, during our time. And again, uh, for all those people who you know who are you know complaining about uh, you know timing and that kind of stuff, you can see how difficult it was 
uh, and how much effort it will take to to basically make and uh, score up uh, the timing as you know professionally w w w would be done uh, using this kind of a system because again uh, you know, editing and that kind of stuff is much harder to do in real time so what you want to do right now is then click like and click uh, uh, subscribe down below and uh, you'll get more videos when I want to get them out okay so until next time see you again